I'm Sterling Perrin with Heavy Reading, and I'm here today talking with Brendan Gibbs. Brendan is the VP of Product Management with Juniper Networks, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Metro Cloud. Hi, Brendan. Welcome. Good to talk to you. Hey, Sterling. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, sure. Exciting times. Um, 5G, you know, every, every all talk is about 5G these days. Certainly in our, our um, surveys, 5G is the top priority among operators globally over and over again. How do you see 5G transforming the metro? You know, I think 5G is really going to drive a sea change in requirements as well as network architectures. Um, I think it's doing a few things. First of all, one of the original premises of 5G was to dramatically increase the bandwidth. So just having m numerous new 5G devices uh, attached to the network is going to drive a, a dramatic increase in bandwidth requirements. Another key requirement was latency, uh, as in reduced latency. And so having reduced latency is going to force service providers to push more and more applications ever closer to the edge of the network. And that's going to include super high bandwidth applications such as video, but also security. And one of the things 5G also is going to do is dramatically increase the number of devices on the network. So increased capacity and lower latency and increased number of devices. And so we're going to start seeing more and more video caching get pushed closer to the end user. We're going to see security authentication and security applications pushed ever closer and also 5G user planes pushed ever closer. So it creates a dramatic, you know, uh, huge sea change of, of, of dynamics in the metro. Right. So a lot of change. We're certainly hearing this as well uh, in our interviews and surveys. What, um, given that, what do you see as the main opportunities then for, for network operators? Well, I think um, service providers have a huge opportunity to differentiate themselves in, in this time. Uh, you know, they've got a, a huge opportunity with uh, so-called beachfront property. Uh, service providers own compelling central office space close to end users. It gives them the opportunity to really exploit that low latency capability that their competitors, even some public cloud operators, really can't match. So being able to exploit that capability for business benefit is a key advantage for them by being able to monetize those applications on top of the network, where previously they were really focused more on basic network connectivity. And I think it's going to, to drive an extra level of stickiness as well, because with more and more applications distributed, it's going to drive more focus on customer experience. And that's another area where operators can really differentiate themselves. Uh, and we at Juniper start uh, calling this the idea of an experienced first network. And I think service providers are really a prime opportunity to leverage that capability. Right. So moving from connectivity or, you know, what gets... Uh, talked about for years, the, the bit pipe provider up to differentiated services, which exactly. is, you know, absolutely critical as you look at the um, the revenue tra trajectory for operators, even in, in mobility, it's um, been a fairly flat line. So they need to, to boost that up. Um, you know, so the Metro architecture, of course, is part of that. Um, but the, um, you know, from Juniper's view, from what I see and hear from you guys, the current architectures are kind of falling down in the face of that that change. What do you see as the biggest challenges then for the current metro architectures, given the shift? Yeah, I mean, given everything I just said, um, nothing that's really deployed today for 3G and 4G services is really going to be suitable for 5G. Uh, there's new uh, protocols that are required, new phase and frequency timing that are not not generally available in prior gen metro platforms. Um, there's just not enough capacity in the, the prior generation of, of platforms either. Uh, so for that reason alone, you're going to need a completely new refresh of Metro uh, access and aggregation platforms. But also think about the, the, the shift I talked about with service distribution into the Metro. That's going to change in a, the, the entire traffic pattern flow because it used to be where traffic would come in from the access and they would just go out linearly kind of east to west uh, to, uh, you know, in one area uh, and out the other from, from the router, from access to aggregation to edge to core, kind of a linear traffic pattern. But with traffic moving into the metro and with the advent to host these applications, uh, such as edge compute or mobile edge compute, now you're going to start seeing a dramatic pattern shift, a, a network traffic pattern shift, where you're going to have east and west, north, south, all the same uh, architecture, all the same point within the network. So that drives new architectures, that new, drives new traffic patterns, that further increases the, the bandwidth requirements of the platforms themselves also. 
So I, I think there's just going to be a, a massive new shift in, in architectures and, and platforms that providers are going to need to react to. And nothing that's de deployed today for 4G is really capable. Great. Yeah. So obviously Juniper is getting ready for that. Uh, I know there's a new strategy and set of products around Cloud Metro. Maybe in the few minutes we have left here, can you just give a brief overview of what the, the Cloud Metro is and really with a focus on you know, how this strategy and product set would, would help network operators? Well, you know, Juniper is, has some of the most extensive expertise building large scale networks in the world from a lot of our experience with cloud scale operators uh, with public cloud. What we're doing is we're taking those same automated, high capacity, high scale operations and bringing that uniquely to the service provider network. And we've, we've coined a phrase for this, which is the, the cloud metro. This is everything I've discussed with the new capacity, new protocols for timing, as well as segment routing, EVPN, uh, SRV6 with FlexAlgo, et cetera. All of that new changes, but we've done a few things. We've introduced new platforms that are designed for this high capacity scale with our ACX platform, specifically the ACX 7100 platforms. We've paired that with a massive degree of service intelligence and awareness built into the platforms. So the platforms themselves are timing aware, slicing aware for you know, new network uh, transport slicing capabilities. Um, and also um, with, with the uh, embedded IP intelligence to offer that type of any to any service steering within the Metro. Finally, though, we, we've paired that with our best in class new Paragon automation suite. So we can offer compelling new outcomes for operators such as lower total cost of operation to manage such huge scale uh, operations. Um, and also um, dramatic lowering of trouble tickets and other sort of uh, capabilities that are required for, for management of such large scale networks. We can offer things such as transport network slicing end to end across an entire metro. And we can also help providers realize that experience first network um, with the ability to actually monitor end to end service streams. Uh, and this came from our acquisition of NetRounds late last year where we can monitor services at the you know, application layer, whether it's video, whether it's 3G, 3GPP mobile uh, service traffic, uh, whether it's voice traffic, et cetera. And this helps operators themselves uh, answer the key question of how do you know? How do you know your network is up? How do you know your network is having great quality for your end customers end to end? So as they move into this new 5G uh, enabled network uh, and, and service capabilities, they can rest confident in the, in the knowledge that their network is superbly available and with superb quality end to end with Juniper Solutions. All right, a lot of innovations coming in, converging all around the Metro and specifically to, to address 5G, which I think is um, exactly, exactly true. It's been, uh, and I'm sure a lot more to come. Uh, so look forward to catching up with you. And thanks though, for sharing your insights today, Brendan. Look forward to following the progress. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. 